Good afternoon, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you again and enjoy our November session of Portraits of What Moves Her. You know, last month we got together and we talked with Pauline Bennett and a group of tremendous agents really focused on business planning and setting ourselves up to make 2021 our best year yet, following on what for many has been just a tumultuous but amazing and chaotic year. Today, we really want to focus on seizing new opportunities. It feels a little bit like a culmination of a number of topics we've talked about this year. And I'm so thrilled to be joined by a number of amazing women within the Coldwell Banker Network who have recently within this year, many, taken a leap, seized a new opportunity. And I thought it'd be a great way to close out the year to talk a little bit about how they got to their yes and how they continue to grow and shape their business, take control of their lives and drive success in their careers going forward. So without further ado, I'm very excited to welcome our first guest today, Amber Shupin from CB Action Holdings in Nebraska. Welcome, Amber. Thank you, Sue. I'm so happy to have you here. Why don't you tell the group a little bit about who you are and where you are to kick us off? I'm Amber Shupin, and we are located in Grand Island, Nebraska, which is the south central part of the state. Um, I uh, just got started. We went live with Coldwell Banker in June. Um, June 22nd was our opening day. My birthday. <laughs> That is fantastic. So tell us a little bit about your journey there. So you're a new franchisee or affiliate within our network, but you're not new to the business, right? So you've been uh, sort of born into the business, I believe, and had quite an interesting journey to now owning your own franchise. Can you share a little bit about that path with us? Yes, absolutely. So I started uh, with a, a company here in Grand Island back in 2011 and uh, had an awesome mentor. He um, was the managing broker and was really involved at the state level, uh, Realtors Association, along with the local board. Um, and I really followed in his footsteps and got involved, um, not just with sales and, and all the things that go along with that, but mm -hmm. the leadership roles and um, being, being a part of all that, being on committees, getting involved with the governmental affairs piece of it and the RPAC. Um, so learned a lot and met a lot of wonderful people um, across the state, not just in, in our local market. Um, that uh, is kind of what got my journey started as there was a property management company that came available for sale and they were just quietly looking. And uh, the guy that owned that uh, mentioned it to one of the other realtors in town and said, hey, do you know anybody that has a, a good fire in her belly and would be interested in purchasing this, this company? And he's like, the only one I know that's a go-getter is Amber Schupin. So um, that created that opportunity for me to uh, step in into my own my own brokerage um, didn't really know much about property management so that was quite a sharp learning curve and they had never <laughs> done sales before and that's all I'd ever done so uh, really worked to, to add the sales piece uh, but struggled um, it had never been a sale so it was really hard to to get people to understand that and so uh, we tried a lot of different things we tried um, changing the name to Action Holdings from Action Property Management to expand and, and include all the other services that we were trying to provide. Um, but then as, as we all know, if you've been in your own your own game, it's it's hard to get all the tools and and the things that agents want for to get that solid recruiting going. So back in 2018, I had applied for um, the Century 21 uh, franchise and uh, was denied and I was I was really crushed uh, but looking back on that now what 
what I've come to realize is it wasn't no, it was just not now. Um, so we got another opportunity to, uh, through the diversity program, to uh, try again for a franchise. And, and I think uh, we're in a much better spot uh, than we would have been at the time. And, you know, the whole through the whole process, it was scary because I'd, I'd been rejected before and it was hard to get get off of that again and and put yourself back out there. And I think so many times once we're told no, we go and sit back on the bench and, and we don't try again. And uh, I'm so glad that I found it in myself to to try again and, and get it going because it has been an amazing journey. And uh, as soon as Jared told me that we were approved and we were moving forward, I woke up every morning thinking, man, is this a dream? Is, is this really <laughs> happening? And it's it's been great. And uh, it's been what we needed to put that last piece of the puzzle in to get some recruiting going. We recruited four great agents right out of the gate. And it's been a really fun ride. I love your story. And I know when we were talking before, and now I'm sure as others are hearing it, just a smile comes across my face. A couple reasons. One, before you had the opportunity to, um, to, to, to take over the property management business, you had put yourself in positions where you were known within the community, where you were known within the realtor community and engaging. And that brought this opportunity to you somewhat, right? So leveraging who you are and opportunities to make that step, right? That and, and putting yourself out there in what sounds like an exceptionally authentic way, which we talk a lot about, right? Um, so that is tremendous. And then of course, the not letting the first no um, stop you. And um, I think a lot of us have struggled with that over our careers. And, you know, you've ended up, you know, like you said, it, it brought together some pieces. You've been able to grow. Can you tell me a little bit about um, your mindset when you approach something you want? Are you very methodical about it? Do you plan a lot or do you kind of jump in? You know, like what were you when you stepped into the realtor community uh, before the property management? Were you methodically thinking, oh, this will lead to something or was it more I want to I just want to be involved in this? I'm a jump off a cliffer, man. Any <laughs> if if I thought about stuff and and did all my research, I probably would only have done about half of anything I ever tried. So I'm one of those that I'm just gonna jump off the cliff. I'm not gonna look back, and I'm gonna if I gotta struggle, if if I gotta fight, uh, whatever I gotta do. Uh, to, to be successful. Does it work every time? No, you know, there's plenty of things I tried or applied for, or wanted to be a part of that, that I was told no, or, you know, not now. Um, and that's okay. I just, you just have to have faith in, in your journey and that um, there's a greater power that's going to put you where you're supposed to be. Um, but your eyes need to be wide open all the time. And um, the best way I have found to do that is to just give myself, give myself to my community, give myself to my industry, uh, give myself to my agents. And um, about every time I've gotten involved in something that there wasn't any any money involved for it, it was just a community thing, you know, something good came out of it. Um, a relationship developed that I needed later on, you know, it's just, just always keep yourself out there uh, doing good and, and eventually good things start happening. I love that. I couldn't agree more. And always keep your eyes open and always take the opportunity. I'm a leap of faith kind of girl myself. Um, I, I just jump sometimes, check C5 parachute maybe halfway down, but um, I think that's uh, it's it served me uh, pretty well. So I'm excited about that. I love hearing that. Not everybody has that innate in them. And so part of what we like to do is also think about how we can encourage that or develop that. And one of the ways I do it is try and encourage being prepared or setting out a plan, even if we don't always. So, you know, you launched in June, um, this new venture with Coldwell Banker and uh, congratulations, we're so excited. Um, how do you go about that? Like integrating yourself, you, you had to, you know, rebrand, you had to learn new systems and tools. You probably had to set forth some plans for what you want to accomplish in your first 12, you know, business plan, which, like I said, we talked a lot about last time. 
What is your approach to that? Because you are a you are a jump off the cliff, but yet you know we do have to like make sure we have the backpack sometimes. So so how do you how have you gone about that since you've taken on the new role, the new the new the company you want? Yes, and that is my next uh, frontier and, and something that I've been working on developing in myself is that strategy. Um, and thank goodness for Coldwell Banker and the tools that they have um, and the training. You know, Karen's been great and she's taught me so much about that planning piece of it and uh, looking at budgets, looking at sales numbers, uh, what's it going to look like next year, putting goals in front of my agents and and not just, you know, let's just work really, really hard and hope it all works out okay, but, but to try to have a more strategic approach to 2021. And so um, the business plan and Dash, I, I just completed that and um, I, I do like numbers and systems and mm -hmm. and data um, always kind of get to be a little nerdy when it comes to that stuff. So um, it was something that was easy to to start to work with as you start seeing solid numbers come through there. It's like, oh, this is cool and I can run this report. And so i um, very excited about being taking that next step as a business owner and, and being more prepared and strategic and, and Coldwell Banker, I have to thank for helping me put that piece together. I love that, Amber. And I think it's great advice for people because there does become a point where we have to go, okay, I guess now I really do need to like put pen to paper and, and um, you know, and it also speaks to constantly evolving as a leader, right? With every step as we scale larger and take on more, whether that be as an agent with a team or an office manager with a growing office or team or anything, it always is reframing where you're at and planning for that next level and continuing to grow. And sometimes, sometimes that means we have to change the way we do stuff. Sometimes it means we just have to augment. So thank you so much. Our initial connection right now is over. I'm going to bring you back at the end, just so everybody knows we're gonna do little snippets today with our guests and then bring everybody on as always to do Q and A after. So Amber, thank you so much. Very, very uh, insightful and um, inspirational advice and, and story for the women on. So I look forward to bringing you back in a few. And right now we are gonna go to Tamara Robinson in California. How are you? I'm well, Sue. How are you? It's so great to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. It's so great to see you. So you've been a regional vice president with Caldwell Banker Realty in Southern California for about six months, maybe? Is that about right? I'm trying to remember when you joined exactly. us. Six months. In about two weeks, it'll be about six months. So I've been with the company um, and I'm very excited to be here. You know, I know you asked me a little bit about my story and how I found myself in this position. So is that is that where we're going here with the conversation? I would love it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Well, you know, when um, I had the privilege of interviewing with you and, and several members of the team um, right in the in the middle of COVID, and you know, I ultimately was not looking for an opportunity. You know, when um, January rolled around, 2019 was my year of yes, where I said yes to many opportunities that came my way. And in January, a mutual friend of ours contacted me. Me about um, Coal Banker seeking a regional vice president in the greater Los Angeles area and mentioned to me that perhaps I might want to consider uh, the opportunity, you know, and I was quite intrigued. You know, the company I knew being in the business for such a long time time did not historically go outside of the company at this level for positions um, at this level. And I was very intrigued by what was going on new and different within the company. And so I started to explore a little bit more about the opportunity and am so excited that I did. You know, as I dug underneath and saw all the innovation happening, the restructure, the core values, and everything was so much in alignment with who I was as a person, um, putting the agent first, being a very agent-centric company. And I, you you know, I found it to be really a match made in heaven and at, from not wanting to look for an opportunity to actually wanting to, as the show talks about, seize the opportunity. I am um, halfway through the process. I knew I wanted it and I went for it very actively and I'm so happy that I did so. Well, so are we. We are so happy and talk about um, change in the midst of, you know, just what a time right during COVID. And, you know, I love that. And I think people should hear that you weren't you weren't looking you know, but your successes spoke for themselves over your career and you got the call, right? And 
that is wonderful when that happens. And sometimes it takes a minute to say, you know, sometimes we don't take that call. Sometimes we do. Um, but it, it, it is, I think, for a takeaway for a lot of people on the call is, always take the call, right? Because you never know what's on the other side of that opportunity um, and and the, the the path that it may lead you on. And we're so thrilled you you took the call and you, you came and made the leap of faith with us. So now that you're here, um, you know, and, and you've, you've settled in a little, right? How do you go about, you have a very large team that you're overseeing and driving to success there. What is your approach? How do you integrate into a new role and, and approach that um, as a new leader? Um, thank you for the question. You know, part of it is really about partnerships, right? I come from a place of collaboration and really getting buy-in from people is understanding, you know, their role. I, I had the privilege over the course of my career of being in a management position at the branch level and leading operations, overseeing other parts of regions. And so I can relate specifically to what the managers and, you know, the me members of my team are dealing with. But being in a new company, you know, there was a few things mm -hmm. in terms of you asked Amber a little bit about her decision process. For me, you know, I'm, I'm very strategic in my approach to things. So from my perspective, I really wanted to understand the history. I wanted to understand the culture. And more importantly, I wanted to have a relationship with the people who were running the various businesses in my territory. And I really sought out by coaching, right? I start by coaching and consulting, you know, one-on-ones, um, really getting down into who they are, what their focus is. And, you know, and all of that is coupled with stuff studying the numbers. Um, you mm -hmm. know, I was talking with uh, Jamie Duran, who is the president of the Southern California area, about some of the opportunities that have uh, existed in the company and how she's been able to shift and move things in different directions. And I believe in, you know, following models that work, right? There's no, no sense in reinventing the wheel. So I looked at and I study success stories and my colleagues who were um, able to do some of the things that I'm looking to accomplish here in my region and really couple with and partner with them to understand the details of that. So for me specifically, what that looks like is um, having a vision, right? Casting that vision and making sure that my vision encompasses the goals of all of my people. You know, down to one of my managers who talked about um, being debt free for the first time in her life, um, understanding why that was important to her and then using that as an opportunity to shift the language of sales. So, you know, I always like to talk about being free and clear as opposed to being debt free. Mm -hmm. So using those one on one opportunities for training, coaching and relationship building. But for me specifically in this particular area, greater Los Angeles is a very pivotal area in the real estate market. It's it's quite visible. Um, you know, obviously there's it's highly competitive and I like to win. So part of it is really <laughs> running hard, um, working hard and casting a vision, probably a lot bigger than what people were thinking for themselves was possible and creating motivation and inspiration to run toward that. I love that. I really do. And, and really what has come out so much as I've gotten to know you is, you know, you care deeply about people and, and helping them achieve their goals and, and helping them think larger to your point than perhaps they thought they could. So. You know, as you're doing that with people, um, you know, how do you go about that? How do you what's part of your decision making? And, and I think you have um, a very, very centered approach that is that is probably, you know, it's a very personal approach to you. And I know we've talked about that. But, you know, when you're evaluating opportunities, you know, what what what's your decision tree on that? What do you think about as you, you know, personally look at taking a leap once you've gotten the yes? How do you decide to say yes to the opportunity? Yeah. Well, a couple of things. First of all, I believe that I have to be um, intentional and accountable to my goals and dreams. Um, so when I evaluate opportunities, for me, it's really about how does this fit into the bigger picture of my life? How does it fit into the bigger picture of my goals? And am I in alignment with what I'm going to be required to do and what the company's values are, what the, the people's values are that I need to deal with? And you know, I, I, you know, I think the word faith was mentioned earlier. You know, I do lead by faith. Obviously, I'm, 
I'm a, a numbers person. So, you know, obviously we're going to make a great business decision, but it has to feel good to me. You know, I don't believe in moving toward things where there's resistance along the way. When there's resistance, there's probably a reason for that. And I just listen to, I listen to myself. Um, you know, people talk about that gut reaction. Um, I, I really do listen to that. It served me well in my life. If something doesn't feel good, it's that smell test. There's probably a reason um, that, that you maybe want to look away from that. And, and I do live by that. Um, obviously, I'm a business person, so I'm going to look at the numbers. I'm going to consider the opportunity. But by and large, I found that um, that served me well at this point in my career. Um, the one thing I will just say from a decision process, you know, Amber talked about just jumping in with both feet. And, you know, I, I like to start with possibility thinking. So how can I? Well, you know, what if, right? I start with those questions and with that thought process. And then, you know, I'm looking toward like, what if I did this? And that's how I got here today. What if this was the opportunity that I told my colleague, my friend many years ago that I was looking for? And it turns out that it actually was. Um, beyond that, I'm going to look under the surface, right? I'm going to look at the details. I'm going to consult with people, but by, you know, I make the decision relatively quickly. And then it's just really about validating that the decision and the choice that I made is, you know, well served by, you know, the, the facts that show up in, uh, in, in my research. I love the balance. Um, and I think as, as women, um, a lot of us do that. We, we tend to lean into our intuition, right? That, that gut feeling. Um, but balancing it with the facts and the data and digging in and really doing your research, right, about what what the opportunity is, what the company is that you're, you know, potentially aligning yourself with. I think that's super valuable because, um, you know, we're our own brand, so to speak. Right. And, and we, we are as we, we are responsible uh, for for that. And I think that's amazing and, um, you know, a very balanced approach. Because sometimes that 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 intuition can can be misread as fear, and sometimes we need to jump past that fear. But uh, the facts can help us get there, right? And I'm so glad you listened to yours and you followed your faith, and you are with us today. I am going to bring you back on in a little bit. Thank you for this uh, intro to you, uh, to the network, and we will see you in a few minutes. I am going to bring up my next guest, which is, who is Tracy Royal. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Sue. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me today. Thanks so much for being here. And Tracy is a realtor with us in our Chicago land office, or which office are you in? I'm out of Oak Park. Oak Park. So absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out there, right? Lewis. So I have a question. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You've had a, a, a phenomenal tenure in our industry, not just as a realtor, but within the realtor community and the industry. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So I have been in the business. Actually, this month is my 24th year anniversary. I started 24 years ago and I actually still love what I do. I'm very passionate about our industry. Um, I started in relocation. I got a chance to see what brokers do from one state to another city to another state. And I was intrigued. I thought that was something that I would be good at. Um, so since then, I have been basically just a transactional broker. Until a few years ago, I wanted to really, really, really be intentional about the direction that I wanted to take my career. So I took a deep dive and I said, you know what, I have to go farther. I have to go beyond just the transaction. I mean, we can talk all day about how to work with buyers and how to work with sellers, but when we lift the hood and we really want to figure out how does this industry work, what preserves the integrity of our industry, I felt it was my duty to be part of that and be part of the change or not change um, that would protect our industry. And so since then, I think if I could do one thing over out of the 24 years, I would have joined a professional organization and so over the last couple of years, um, that's exactly what I did. I joined the Women's Council of Realtors. And today I will be the 2021 president for the Women's Council of Realtors Illinois. And I also currently sit on the board of directors for Illinois Realtors and the Chicago Association of Realtors. And through those experiences, it, it really has given me an opportunity to get up close and personal with the things that affect our industry. Um, things that we need to know so that we can be of better service and better stewards of our craft to our clients. And in addition to that, 
Um, the other thing that I really enjoyed that I didn't know years ago was it's an opportunity for you to pay it forward, um, to mentor, mm -hmm. to bring along those others who are seeking amazing things that this industry has to offer. So I'm always looking to be a help to someone or to just see them grow. I get excitement just seeing some of my colleagues grow in the places that they want to be. I love that. And, and it is so important. And we give back. Our, our industry is so known for giving back to our communities and we're very charitable, um, which I love. We're born from our communities. But just as important, as you mentioned, is, is engaging in the industry, right? Um, there's a lot of things that um, opportunities to drive change, to move the business forward, to move the industry forward. And I'm so impressed always by leaders who kind of step into that, that say, you know what, this industry has given me a lot. It's time for me to give back to it and to help guide and, and drive that and really understand what makes it move. And, and it's so amazing. So what have you um, what have you found uh, saying yes to opportunities has gotten you? And maybe we'll step back. How did you decide to take the, the and what was the path to getting to? I know you recently chaired um, uh, one of the uh, groups in Chicago. Like, what is that? You know, you, I, I know you talked about wanting to give back, but kind of how do you go through that process, leverage your network, kind of get yourself to that opportunity and then say yes to it? Absolutely. So I first just try to determine if this thing I'm going to say yes to, is it in alignment with not only my personal goals, but my professional goals? If that's the yes, then I take the time to do the research. I want to research the mission, the vision of what I'm about to embark on to make sure that um, the expectations, what are the expectations that will, what would be expected of me? Because I want to make sure that whatever role I step into, I want to be successful. I want to be successful. I want to see uh, amazing things happen. And then lastly, I think just one of the core values of Cole Banker is we have to include our family. So I make sure that I consult with not only my daughter, but my husband to, to ensure that, you know, they are bought into the process. They understand the process. They understand what commitments I may have to take on and I need their buy in. Uh, if family and home is not happy, I'm not happy. So I think collectively, when I when I put all those things together and I'm feeling pretty good about it, I'm feeling pretty positive, I know that I can do my best work and that leads me to my yes. I love that. And 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 having that holistic approach is super important if it, if we're making those decisions and uh, taking on something new or or something different. You know, when we were talking before, um, you mentioned something about change being kind of like a necessary normal, I think was the phrasing that I wrote down, but, you know, and, and driving to be a better version of yourself, right? And, and helping both you and others get to the next level. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Because I love that perspective of, you know, the better version of yourself um, and, and, and what that next level looks like for you. Sure. So I think just innately, we as humans, we we plan and we goal set and we have a tunnel vision view of where we think we need to be in life. But then somewhere along that journey, life happens. Some of it will be good. Some of it will be bad. Some of it will be in between. And so my perspective is I just kind of go with it. And I'm always looking at it from a glass half full approach, because how many times have you run into someone who says, wow, if I had never said yes, or if I had never been open to this opportunity, I would not have ever, or I wouldn't have met this person. I wouldn't have had this opportunity. I wouldn't have, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have knew that I could do these other things. And so I try to stay open to that, uh, open to the opportunity. I try to stay marketable, continue on my path for professional development. I try to stay educated in the field and stay ready, just stay ready. So that when the opportunity presents itself, I think you can shed some of that fear and you can walk into it with a little bit more confidence. But a friend who happens to be part of my women's council family told me that when you are faced with opportunities and you feel that feeling like the cold hands, you have the hair standing up on your neck and you're just feeling this wave of, of fear, actually turn that around and say, hey, I'm just really excited. And I've been using that, that model uh, for quite a few years now. And the excitement, it, it exudes energy. The universe will align itself to give you exactly what you need 
the people you need to encounter, the tools, you will get exactly what you need to be successful. So I think if you just stay open to opportunity as things change, change with the change, and ultimately when you come out on the other side, even if it's different from the path you charted for yourself, you will have discovered new tools, new ideas, another level of strength, and a component of leadership that you would have never thought you could have. I, oh, I love that. It is so true. And, and it's funny. I was, my daughter had to give a presentation at school the other day. She was like doing the, the morning meeting and she was so nervous. And I was trying to frame it up for her. I'm like, that's not nerves. That's excitement, you know? And I'm yeah. trying, to, trying to tell her to flip that all around and harness that in a positive way, um, okay. which we think we got through. She wouldn't let me listen. But, you know, she's at that age. Mom has to, you know, yeah. hang out downstairs or something. So, okay. so when oh, yeah. you know I know yeah, when, when you step into something new, whether it be one of the industry leadership roles you've had um, or even coming to a new new brokerage, which we're thrilled you did, by the way, um, you, you know, how do you how do you gain the trust of the people that you are now working with, whether it be on a committee or, um, you know, agents around you, your cl- I'm sure your clients. And, and you've probably touched on it a little bit about being, you know, sort of who you are and, and ethical and all of that. But is there a way you approach starting something new when you're dealing with new people um, that you have used that, that maybe puts them at ease or helps you get to know them? I think the first thing is do what you say you're going to do. If you say you're going to do something, definitely do it. Um, that, that's a, always a for sure winner with, in any role, in any type of relationship. Um, Another uh, concept that I use is uh, leading by example. Uh, I am am a firm believer. I do not take on a role or take on a task where I'm just taking it on just to have another thing to do or to check a box. I am a firm believer of doing the work. And so I think when you you gain the trust from others, when you do the work, um, people know that you will get in with them, that you got their back. that's another way of building trust. So just do what you say you're going to do, uh, do the work and just be open, be open. I mean, everything is not always rosy every day, but having that open mindset gives you an opportunity to learn and to grow. And so that's that's always a, a method that I use, whether I'm working with clients, um, if I'm stepping into a new role, uh, the role for Illinois Realtors, uh, the Affordable Housing Committee that I chaired this year. This is my first time chairing a committee at that level. And yes, I was afraid. I was afraid of the unknown. I was afraid of failing. That's just normal feelings that you have when you're starting something new. But I did what I said I was going to do. I also reached out to my mentors and my champions. I enlisted some help. And I'm never afraid to ask for help when I feel like I need it. And so collectively, I did those things and I learned more about myself. I was able to implement a lot of new things in my business that's going to help my consumer clients. And um, it was just overall a great experience. And then the committee members who were also part of the committee this year, they got excited. They got excited. They saw the passion and we all just had a really good time and we got some really good work done this year. So that's something I'm very proud of. You should be very, very proud of it. A very important committee to be a part of um, and one certainly to lead with passion. And uh, if we can have fun while getting things accomplished, that's kind of a home run, right? That is that okay. is wonderful. Um, when we come back, I want to ask you um, a couple more questions from the audience. But right now, I'm going to thank you so much for your time with us. I, I love you know your perspective of learning and not being afraid to ask for help. Um, that is something that you know, we all as leaders have to continue to do and be very comfortable doing. And uh, we all tend to everyone I talk to that shares that nugget has realized success beyond what they thought. So, um, you know, leverage the village. Women's Council is an amazing village to be a part of uh, for sure. So thanks for taking some time with us. I am going to bring you back in a few minutes. But first, I'm going to bring up somebody I think you know very well, Nakia Pipion McGriff. Welcome. Hi, Sue. How, how are you? Hi, I am good. You are just on a speaking circuit today. So <laughs> Nakia is our Vice President of Broker Services, Brokerage Services for Caldwell Banker Realty in Chicago and was just inaugurated as the first Black female president of the Chicago Association of Realtors. So we all should take a minute and just honor that. Um, 
what an accomplishment. So exciting. And um, you've been with us for a couple of months. Three months. <laughs> Another woman who thought, hey, in the midst of COVID, let me go change my job. This sounds yeah. awesome. So, you know, you were such an inspiration for so many. I know that the, the team in Chicago is is benefiting so much from your expertise and your 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 brain and just, you know, everything you bring to the table. Um, walk us a little bit through your career and, and how you got to where you are. Sure. Well, Sue, first of all, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on your new role and shattering another ceiling. I appreciate you and you inspire me uh, along with plenty of the women in our organization. Uh, I've been a broker for 15 years. I have taught for our local MLS. I also serve as a governor appointed um, member of our state licensing disciplinary and administration board. And those are all opportunities that just came to me by asking, by saying, hey, you know what, I'm really interested in learning more about our industry. And that's so important. I've always constantly focused on learning more. I think that, you know, when we look at success, success is a moving target. You know, how I conducted business 15 years ago is not the same way we can all be successful today. So that's so important to me to constantly fine tune my knowledge of the industry that we all love. That's amazing. So, you know, the path to where you've come, um, you know, is, is one we could talk about forever. I want to spend a minute on when you get that offer, when you get that that nod, how do you go about deciding it's the right thing for you? Because I think we've all reached somewhere where someone's offered us something and sometimes we say no, right? But how do you decide to say yes, right? What is that decision tree, if you will, for you? I think you've got to look at number one, how does this align with your personal goals? Uh, how does this align? For me, uh, after losing my son, Xavier, my personal health and the health of my son, my youngest son is so important. So how does this role help support me being the best parent that I can be? Um, and so those are always questions that I ask whenever someone asks for me to share my time, because anytime I say yes to a role, a, an opportunity, I'm saying no potentially to time that I spend with my son. So that's first and foremost, you know, what is the risk to my family and health? What are short-term risks? What are long-term risks? And does it help me live my purpose? I think is something. Um, am I able to help others or impact others in the role? I think are, are questions that I often uh, ask myself when I get those sort of opportunities. I, you know what, what was running through my head um, when I was thinking that and, and when you were speaking and beyond just, you know, how much you've um, overcome and and persevered through in your life, um, which is phenomenal um, in living your purpose and, and making decisions. Nothing came into that answer about whether you were good enough or whether you were capable. And I think that is something everyone should hold on to, right? Because once somebody says yes or gives you the opportunity, they've already decided that you're capable. Don't undermine it, right? Just just leverage the decision a different way then think about the things as it relates to your life. Um, I love that. And, and I think it's so important for, for women to take that framing, for everyone to take that framing. That's incredible. I love that. Absolutely. I think we're often our worst critic uh, and so um, it's important to let go and understand that you will be successful. If someone's reached out to you for an opportunity, then, you know, definitely they already see the potential. So even if you're struggling with that decision, it's so important to A, say yes. Uh, and then also if it aligns with your goals, but also to create sort of a, a contact sphere around you to help bridge that gap if you feel like there is a gap in uh, the opportunity. That's, yeah, very sound advice. So once you're in role, um, and whether it be your new one with us over a couple months that you've been here or or your your new role with the association, what's your first step? How do you how do you approach that? What do you think about and, and what do you do? What's your process? 
Uh, well, first, everybody knows I say this, I, you got to do the work, right? You've been mm -hmm. asked to accomplish a task, asked to uh, step into a new role. So making sure that you really are focused on understanding not only how are you successful, how is the team going to be successful and how do you fit into that uh, framework is important. Uh, so getting to know the people that you're going to be working with. Uh, is so important. So that's also a step to just say, hey, can we grab coffee? You know, obviously now it's uh, lots of Zoom and Microsoft team <laughs> meetings, but taking the step to get to know why other people are in that role and how you can help them achieve their goals. I think it's also uh, something something that's been very important for me here in the role uh, with Global Banker as well. That's wonderful. Now you and I were talking a little bit about how somewhat disappointing it is that we still talk about the numbers, the numbers being the first, right? Yeah. Or yeah. the eighth, I believe, only woman. So can you just talk a little bit about your experience and 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 how you view that being the first um, or or the only the eighth, right? And and Rebecca uh, number seven as as women and some of those numbers and, and why it's so important that we stop having to frame, you know, get to the point where we're not framing things in, in such numbers anymore, if that makes sense. Well, I think, yeah, when you and I were talking, Sue, um, it is an amazing opportunity to be the first black woman president in 137 years. But what I'm focused on is making sure it doesn't take another 137 years <laughs> for the second, third, fourth, fifth, et cetera. Uh, and when, one statistic that we really don't talk about is that I'm only the eighth, seventh or eighth president of the woman president of Chicago Association of Realtors. And the fact that we're still counting on uh, less than two hands is an issue. And I challenge everyone to kind of evaluate what does your leadership team look like? Because you can't really have diversity if a woman is not at the table. And diversity is not just race, it is uh, gender. Uh, different ethnicities. Uh, so it's so important for us to, again, to be laser focused, to make sure that we are as inclusive as possible as we're looking to evolve. This is a global society. And so we've got to have global perspectives at the table. 100%. I, I agree so wholeheartedly with that. And um, kind of living that a little bit myself um, today in, in, you know, sometimes you don't realize the impact um, it may have and, and the, the, the spread and the reach. And it, for me, it 100% like reaffirms the, the desire I have to scooch over and pull a chair up for somebody else. So I'm not the only one sitting at that table. And, and, you know, you are without question trailblazing that in many fronts um, for, um, for our industry. And so I thank you for that. I'm going to ask one last question for you and, um, then we're going to bring up the rest of the panel. How do you find the time? How do you find the time, um, to do it, uh, what seems like all, and, and I've been known to say you can't have it all at the same time, right? So how, how do you find the time? That's an important question. Uh, first of all, I live by Outlook. I literally have eat lunch in my calendar. I have pick up my son in my calendar. So if you know me, you know it doesn't happen unless it's in Outlook. So planning ahead, um, you know, I love to look at my schedule every Sunday to see what's the what's coming up this week. What are the wins? What do I need to accomplish? Uh, and even more important for me is making sure that I've scheduled intentional time with my son. So that's kind of where, where I start. And then the work, you know, fill, fills in the gap, if you will. But really the passion, you know, the time that I get to spend meeting new brokers, meeting brokers in our uh, industry and helping to find other leaders is really not work. It's passion for me. So I don't feel like a lot of the stuff I'm doing with Women's Council and of course with the Chicago Association of Realtors is work. It's really giving back to an industry that's just been so impactful and been so supportive of me. Yeah, I, it, that's fantastic. And I think calendaring with priority your time, right? That's I was on a call recently and I talked about purple blocks, right? And it was this idea uh, that I stole from someone 
uh, with pride, um, this idea of you know making purple blocks of time on my calendar that I don't even need to tell anybody where I am or what I'm doing. They're mine, right? And and they're not to be touched. And there's sort of those those moments, even if it's just 30 minutes for coffee at the end of the day or whatever, but certainly prioritize. I do the same thing, by the way. I have lunch in my calendar. I have picks to come up. This, this crazy calendar behind me is my daughter's school schedule. It has nothing to do with work, guys, by the way. It's like virtual, not virtual, right? I have to put in gymnastics. So it's important to do that and to make that and not feel guilty about it. I think uh, we, we tend to do that sometimes. Um, very, very That's important. So thank you so much. Thank you for everything you are doing um, on behalf of the community, on behalf of the industry. Um, and thank you for being part of Coldwell Banker. You make us better. I, I can't say that enough. I'm going to bring everybody else back on now. And we're going to do a couple. We're going to try and do a couple. Hey, everyone. We're all just so everybody like walking out there knows we're on like a weird delay. So it can be a little strange. So I'm going to circle around really and start uh, same type of question to you, Tracy, um, being so involved with local advocacy. How do you find the time um, to to keep focused on your your business as well? What's your approach? Great question. I'm going to piggyback off of what Nakia said. We and I didn't do this before. I didn't do this before, but I live by my calendar. I am a robot about managing my time. So I block out those times when I need personal time with my family. When I you just get to be a master at scheduling. Um, but ultimately, it, it's not work. When you, it, it teaches you how to manage your time, and that's not something that I had before. So doing this, if someone wants to know what's the benefit, it teaches you how to be a better professional. Yeah, I, that's great. And I used to be terrible at it. I was like a wing and a prayer, right? Like, I'll see if I get it done. I don't know. And man, I sleep more now than I did then. And I certainly had a lot less on my plate. So Amber, how about you? Have you, and have you had to pivot how you, um, how you balance your time, even though balance is like my least favorite word, but how you manage your time? Yes. And uh, I'll, I'll jump on the same train that the other ladies are on. Yeah. It's all about being scheduled and having that calendar and same thing. Uh, that's the Bible. And if it's not in there, I won't remember to be there. So it's, it's gotta be, it's gotta be in there. Um, you know, another thing is, is, uh, being able to delegate. Um, if you got something that, uh, you can, you can give to someone else to take care of, um, try to try to accomplish that as well. And um, gosh, I, trying, I had one more other other thought there and now I lost it. But uh, yeah, definitely staying scheduled. <laughs> oh, now I remember. And then if you do find you have downtime, you know, sometimes we kind of get to where we just stare at our computer and and just appreciate the silence and and just always trying to make use of that time too and and you pick up a folder for uh something that you're involved in or a committee and and go ahead you've got a few minutes and and just go through it sometimes if you just spend a few minutes with some of that stuff um a day it you can be really surprised how much you can get done and stay on task not a lot of idle time how about you tamara well, for me, it starts with, I mean, obviously, we're all very um, busy uh, executives and, and women in the industry. And so we manage our time by our calendar. But for me, it was really about learning to say no, right? If, if, does this, how does this fit into um, the goals, the, the dreams, the vision that I have for myself, for my business? And, you know, that, that was a really big thing for me because we want to be able to help um, consult and coach and grow and develop people, but does it really fit into our priorities? And sometimes maybe it's not no, maybe it's just not now, right? So, um, you know, and, and other people will ultimately push their priorities onto you. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to really look at whether or not it fits in with where you're driving your life, your business and your family. Um, and, and be able to be okay with declining to, to participate or declining to allow people access to your schedule. The other thing that I would say is that for me, it's really about being very intentional with the things that are important to me, letting people know um, that they can schedule time with me. So for instance, 
You know, I, I have a, a small group of women who I spend time with and helping to consult with business. You know, I look at business as a spiritual pursuit. You know, like these ladies are talking about advocacy and support for the industry. For me, that's how I look at business, coaching, consulting, I'm supporting the growth of entrepreneurs. That for me is really what drives me, my passion, my energy, and really causing people to have bigger lives and achieve their goals and dreams. So I make sure that the things that feed my spirit, like you talked about your purple time, always find a place place in my calendar on a regular and a consistent basis. So I'm sprinkling in those things that add energy to me. But I think in terms of getting everything done, it's just having clarity around the goals and the priorities. And that makes it very simple um, of how you choose to um, invest your time in whatever it is that we do. Um, very uh, a common theme or, or a thread here coming through is be a little bit protective of your time. Um, and be very intentional in it. Uh, no fear to say no and delegating, uh, man, um, God, I didn't know how to do that before. And it, it is so critical to scale yourself if, you know, to, to, to be able to delegate. So one question in here, and I'll stick with you since we're, we're on you, Tamara, what is, how do you get over um, a fear? Right. So any tips on getting over the fear of being uncomfortable, whether I'm guessing in a role or a company or a job, any tips for anybody on how you've done that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I use a couple of colloquialisms. Um, feel the fear and do it anyway, right? Uh, be comfortable being uncomfortable. Like we've heard those statements before, but how does that show up really in actuality? And that is just to have a vision for what your ultimate outcome is. So for instance, with this particular position, having been with another company and another brand for you know the greater part of 16 years, um, I never imagined or envisioned myself in another role or another model outside of that organization. Organization. Now, I can't say that I felt a fear about it, but it certainly wasn't in a vision that I had for myself. So for me, whenever that feeling comes up, first, I think we talked about, you know, well, how, what do we make that mean to us? You know, what is fear? Fear is just excitement, right? So every time I feel what other people might consider to be fear, I call it excitement. Wow, I'm really excited about that. What makes me excited about that? And then I'll ask myself that question. Why am I excited? And I answer it with something positive. So for me, it's really about possibility thinking. Wow, this excitement could lead to, and I'll answer that question no matter what it is that shows up for me. So I, I have this bent on positivity um, about everything that shows up in life because I believe that everything you know that happens in my world is really conspiring to cause me to be happy and to have a great life, no matter what it is, right? So I feel every experience through that lens. And so whenever I feel that, that's what I believe for myself. That's great. Nikki, I saw you nodding a little bit. How about you? What are your thoughts on um, on that? Getting over a fear? Oh, well, fear is, is natural um, and it's healthy. It means that you're thinking, wow, I, I have this amazing opportunity. How am I going to give impact? That's when I get nervous. It's like, how can I deliver impact in this role? Um, and really, it's I, I stop, you know, because oftentimes, again, we're our own worst critic. And I say, I ask myself, what if I win? Right. So what's the downside of me taking this opportunity? If it aligns with my goals, uh, what is the win for both me and the organization? Uh, so that's kind of how I outline it. I'm a, a very bullet point driven. So you'll see me making notes and outlines. And it's really about, all right, what are the pros? What are the cons? And then the, the biggest question is, what if you win? And I think that's so powerful for us uh, as women, of course. That's uh, that's um, one of my sayings that I had in a prior world, which is actually um, framed on my wall right now, which is embrace the power of what if, right? And so try and reframe it to what if, what if it's amazing. And don't let the negative what ifs come in, right? Because that we just know we pick up and keep moving. But imagine where you can jump to if you take the leap. Um, it's awesome. How about you, Amber? Was there um, fear or were you, you know, um, launching your own brokerage with Coldwell Banker and making that shift? And how did you get over that? Or maybe there wasn't, but if there was. Yeah, you know, there was definitely some moments that you're like, wow, is this all going to come together? Is this going to work out? I'm really getting my neck stuck out here. I'm adding on to my office. Am I going to get these recruits over here? 
Um, you know, and, and I think probably the best way I found it to deal with fear, it usually comes out of the unknown. Um, so I try to, to study up and, and learn as much as I can about the things that I'm uncertain and, um, always, always tweaking them. It's like, if something didn't quite go go well, really evaluating that and changing that uh, the next time you go back into that fire, so that you're you're better prepared and making those adjustments and and not just keep doing the same thing that because you're just going to get the same result. Um, and then relying on your team, you know, and and it's not always your your team in the office. It's I'm, I'm not an accounting wizard. I am not a legal wizard. It's, it's going back to your attorney or your accountant or relying, you know, I, I do what I do well and those people do what they do well and, and letting them help uh, guide you through some of the things that you don't understand and, and relying on their information too. And then you don't feel so alone either. You feel like you've, you've got your team together um, and moving forward together. That's great. It's so important to leverage the team around you and the experts in what they're experts in, right? And focus on we can be where we can be the highest and best. So Tracy, how about you? So I equate fear. The only other emotion as strong as fear is love. And when we fall in love, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. So I kind of look at fear as a process. Overcoming fear is a process. I look at whatever I'm trying to do. I try to break it down in smaller pieces and I go for the small wins. Accomplishing a small win will make me feel better. I will feel more confident. And at some point, I will begin to love the fear. So that's that's kind of how I look at it. I love that. Um, and, and I love that, that equating um, of the process. And it can be a process, but what I love is no one runs from it, right? We all manage through it. And, um, you know, it, it is one of those sayings, get comfortable being uncomfortable. I think uh, get comfortable working through being uncomfortable to get to the other side, right? Because we, we don't want to let something um, stop us from taking that next opportunity. So um, I, we are so running out of time. I have like a million things I wanna ask all of you, of course. I always like to wrap with my guests. I think some of you already answered this a little bit, but with what moves you? So Amber, what moves you? New opportunities to learn and and be engaged is is definitely what moves me. That's wonderful, Tamara. Um, business, business as a spiritual pursuit. It it moves me to drive and grow businesses, and I like to say create legacies through um, business. That's wonderful. And Tracy, what moves you? I'm going to agree with Tamara, uh, legacy building. That's how, what I grew up off of. And will the work I've done be remembered and respected when I am no longer here? Oh, I love that, all of you. Nikia, what moves you? Sue, what moves me is uh, being able to make an impact in the world as I survive the loss of my son, Xavier. Uh, every day I try to rise up and make an impact on the communities that I serve. That is fabulous. Ladies, I cannot thank you so much for taking the time to share your wisdom and your stories and your pathways to seizing opportunities and really creating those opportunities for yourselves by just being amazing, fearless leaders. Thank you so much for being here today. And I have been asked, thank you so much, um, I guess one of the questions that came in was if what moves her is going to continue. So yes, um, I am working through what that's going to look like. But yes, I am fully intending to continue with the What Moves Her series. Um, I think this has been an amazing opportunity. I've learned so much from all of you, and I hope you all have enjoyed this year and this series. Um, I have found it to be inspirational and guiding, and I am just so honored to have brought that uh, and this entire experience to all of you. So thank you so much. I know we saw a comment where somebody said that they are soaking this all in. This has been the best what moves her for them this year. So thank you so much for that. 
Thank you for tuning in every month with us during this time. And I hope all of you go forward, seize the opportunity, and have an amazing 2021. We'll see you next year. Thank you.